The Roman conquest of Britain was a gradual process, beginning effectively in 43 AD during the reign of Emperor Claudius, whose general, Aulus Plautius, participated in the invasion and then served as the first governor of Roman Britain. The conquest was never completed, the northern tribes of Scotland remaining independent. Before Claudius, the Romans had other attempts to conquer territories on the island. Since Julius Caesar's expeditions in 55 and 54 BC, Britain had enjoyed diplomatic and trading links with the Romans, and their economic and cultural influence was a significant part of the British late pre-Roman Iron Age, especially in the south. Augustus prepared invasions in 34 BC, 27 BC and 25 BC. The first and third were cancelled due to revolts elsewhere in the empire, while the second because the Britons seemed ready to come to terms. According to Strabo's geography, written during this period, Britain paid more in customs and duties than could be raised by taxation if the island was conquered. The political situation within Britain became very agitated by the 40s AD. The Catu Velauni had displaced the Trinovantes as the most powerful kingdom in southeast Britain, taking over the former Trinovantian capital of Camulodonum and were pressing their neighbors, the Atrebates, ruled by the descendants of Julius Caesar, formal ally Commius. In 43 AD, Claudius organized an invasion force to reinstate Verica, an exiled king of the Atrebates. Aulus Plautius, a distinguished senator, was given overall charge of four legions, totaling about 20,000 men, plus about the same number of auxiliaries. The main invasion force under Aulus Plautius crossed in three divisions. The port of departure is usually considered to have been Boulogne and the main landing at Richborough. Neither of these locations is certain. British resistance was led by Togodumnus and Karatakus, sons of the late king of the Catu Velauni, Cunubeline. A substantial British force met the Romans at the river crossing, thought to be near Rochester on the river Medway. The battle raged for two days. Hosidius Geta was almost captured, but recovered and turned the battle so decisively that he was awarded the Roman triumph. The British were pushed back to the Thames. They were pursued by the Romans across the river, causing some Roman losses in the marshes of Essex. Whether the Romans made use of an existing bridge for this purpose or built a temporary one is uncertain. Togodumnus died shortly after the battle on the Thames. Plautius halted and sent word for Claudius to join him for the final push. Cassius Dio presents this as Plautius needing the Emperor's assistance to defeat the resurgent British who were determined to avenge Togodumnus. However, Claudius was no military man. Claudius's arch says he received the surrender of 11 kings without any loss. Cassius Dio relates that he brought war elephants and heavy armaments, which would have intimidated any remaining native resistance. The Romans established their new capital at Camulodunum, and Claudius returned to Rome to celebrate his victory. Caratacus escaped and would continue the resistance further west. The next emperor who continued the conquest Vespasian took a force westwards, subduing tribes and capturing their fortified settlements as he went, going at least as far as Exeter. In the north, within four years of the invasion, it is likely that an area south of a line from the Humber to the Severn estuary was under Roman control. Late in 47 AD, the new governor of Britain, Publius Ostorius Scapula, began a campaign against the tribes of modern-day Wales and the Cheshire Gap. The Silers of Southeast Wales caused considerable problems to Ostorius and fiercely defended the Welsh border country. Caratacus himself was defeated in the Battle of Ker Caradoc and fled to the Roman client tribe of the Brigantes who occupied the Pennines. When Nero became emperor in 54 AD, he seems to have decided to continue the invasion. Gaius Suetonius Paulinus mounted a successful campaign across Wales, famously destroying the Druidical Center at Mona or Anglesey in 60 AD at what historians later called the Menai Massacre. 
Final occupation of Wales was postponed, however, when the rebellion of Boudicca forced the Romans to return to the southeast. The queen of the Iceni tribe commanded an army that burned to the ground Londinium, Verulamium, and Camulodonum. Her army was defeated by the Romans in the Battle of Watling Street in 61 AD. Following the successful suppression of Boudicca's uprising, a number of new Roman governors continued the conquest by edging north. The Siliers were not finally conquered until circa 76, when Sextus Julius Frontinus' long campaign against them began to have success. In mid-summer of 78 arrived the new governor, Agricola. He found several previously defeated peoples had re-established their independence. The first to be dealt with were the Ordovices of North Wales, who had destroyed a cavalry unit of Roman auxiliaries stationed in their territory. Knowing the terrain from his prior military service in Britain, Agricola was able to move quickly to defeat and virtually exterminate them. He then invaded Anglesey, forcing the inhabitants to sue for peace. The following year he moved against the Brigantes of northern England and the Selgovi along the southern coast of Scotland, using overwhelming military power to re-establish Roman control. Tacitus says that after a combination of force and diplomacy quieted discontent among the Britons who had been conquered previously, Agricola built forts in their territories in 79. In 80 he marched to the Firth of Tay, not returning south until 81, at which time he consolidated his gains in the new lands that he had conquered and in the rebellious lands that he had reconquered. In 82 he sailed to either Kintyre or the shores of Argyll or to both. In 83 and 84, he moved north along Scotland's eastern and northern coasts, using both land and naval forces, campaigning successfully against the inhabitants and winning a significant victory over the northern British peoples led by Calgacus at the Battle of Mons Graupius. Prior to his recall in 84, Agricola built a network of military roads and forts to secure the Roman occupation. Existing forts were strengthened and new ones planted in northeastern Scotland along the Highland Line, consolidating control of the valleys that provided access to and from the Scottish Highlands. In southernmost Caledonia, the lands of the Selgovi, approximating to modern Dumfriesshire and the stewardry of Kirkwoodbright, were heavily planted with forts, not only establishing effective control there, but also completing a military enclosure of south-central Scotland. In contrast to Roman actions against the Selgovi, the territories of the Novanti, Damnoni and Votadini were not planted with forts and there is nothing to indicate that the Romans were at war with them. Agricola was recalled to Rome by Domitian. His successors are not named in any surviving source but it seems they were unable or unwilling to further subdue the far north. Fortifications of the Gask Ridge in Perthshire, erected to consolidate the Roman presence in Scotland in the aftermath of Mons Graupius, were abandoned within the space of a few years. It is equally likely that the costs of a drowned out war outweighed any economic or political benefit and it was more profitable to leave the Caledonians alone and only under the jury submission. Roman occupation was withdrawn to a line subsequently established by the construction of Hadrian's Wall. An attempt was made to push this line north to the River Clyde River Fort area in 142 when the Antonine Wall was constructed. This was once again abandoned after two decades and only subsequently reoccupied on an occasional basis. The Romans did not succeed in subduing all of Britain. Although most people in southern Britain settled down to Roman order and discipline, the Romans had to maintain a significant military presence to control the threat from the unconquered tribes. <laughs>